far as gender is concerned, um, fund managers, we tend to think of, on, on the gender side, we tend to think of women as only recipients of investment capital. We don't think of them as asset holders and providers of capital in their own right. So for me, one of the biggest lessons, and I, unfortunately I keep going on harping on about the same people, but that's because the market remains narrow and very, very small because we have not broken this barrier yet. So female owned fund of fund, you know, fund managers, Alithia, IDF here in South Africa, GPI, which is the one we all talk about with Runa Alam. You know, these funds spent, Runa has done a little bit better, but in her early years, she will tell you it was an upward slope to try and get funding. For, for these others, it's, it's an eight year, sometimes 10 year process to just get LPs and partners into their fund structures. And, and yet, to me, if you really, really want to elevate and accelerate the reach to women, you know that if you have a, a woman-owned business, she's going to have affinity. Of course, she's going to make some hard-nosed business decisions, but she's going to have a much more natural understanding of a female underlying investee company than, than a male-owned company would. And again, I don't mean this to be disparaging. I think it's just the reality in which we live. And so I think that, first of all, look at the female asset holders on the African continent and work with them work with them and CDC also has been very good at this historically, which is to create markets. We need to create a marketplace for this. But there's also the investor. In Zambia, the one that always comes to mind for me is Monica Musonda with Java Foods, because many people can relate in this region with her. She struggles to get funding, you know, and, and she's, she's managed to get over it, but that's just because many males actually stepped up and took her personal risk and said, we will do this with you. So she's now moved on from importing noodles to actually manufacturing noodles, to actually doing nutritious cereals, et cetera. Um, Sahel in, in, in Nigeria, which is Ndidi and her husband, sorry, I have to say Ndidi and her husband, but um, which is good for a change, right? <laughs> it's the other way around. <laughs> they are doing some amazing things in the food industry. Um, but they still have to position themselves for a particular type of funding. So we, as a community, I think if GSG can achieve one thing, and if uh, the, the, the 2X community can achieve one thing, it is to de-risk perception-wise and structurally the debt, equity, lending, investment facility, the financial tools that are out there, de-risk this asset class that we call women-owned businesses and women in business. And there are many financial tools with which you can do that. You can invest, you can, and now I see as well, financial sector deepening Africa, which is a UK FCDO funded um, organization in the region, they are actually in the process of issuing, uh, uh, in the same way they did green bonds, they now want to do a gender bond. So that we need to look at the different financial instruments to make this work. The financial sector has got to step up. I always say the financial sector is a big definer and a big transformer of markets. And, and so when everybody said microfinance was the way to go, it was the financial sector that made it happen. When everybody said SMEs, it was the financial sector that made it happen. When we started talking about green bonds, it's the financial sector that makes it. Greening the economy is the financial sector. So now we're talking about women, the financial sector has got to step up.